Okay, so you see gold rallying、uh, to about three thousand, four thousand after this giant collapse, but mostly due to fundamental reasons and demand for it. I do not see gold as、like、standard but, for money in the future. Gold, right, so you don't see、view. gold playing a major role in any kind of global monetary reset. You do see Bitcoin playing that huge role. You have in the past said that you do expect Bitcoin to also not weather this crash; that it's going to go down the、uh, most. The, mo- the most. It's、okay. the biggest bubble, so it's bubbled the most, and and, and it already has gone down. It's gone from sixty nine to sixteen. Now it's bounced to what twenty one. My prediction, and people even, I know a lot of crypto people down here in Puerto Rico. They really, they 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 think it's going to ten to eleven. The smartest crypto people. I think it's going to thirty two fifty. That is simply the last low before the last bubble. Up to from from it went from thirty two fifty in a year and a half to sixty nine. I think it goes back to thirty two fifty, and then we start a longer term boom for crypto. And I think I see it as the next big thing. It. I didn't get it till a guy speaking in my own conference in a few years said it. Mark Yusko, he defined the crypto thing as the digitization of all financial assets and money. Digitization makes just like we did with the internet and and, and information. We digitized that, and made it available, easily accessible. That's gonna there's six hundred trillion dollars a day in financial assets. I'm the only one that knows that number. Ask somebody how many financial assets there are in the world, you won't get an answer. Six hundred trillion. We're we're almost there. Okay, digitizing and making that easier to trade and 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 and, and pass around and make more efficient. That is a huge thing. So that's what that's what the crypto thing really is. It's not about having forty thousand coin and every all all crypto's been so far is new companies can issue a coin instead of an IPO at a at a tiny point. They, they, it's a cheap IPO. And you know what that means? We got a bunch of BS companies out there with cheap IPOs that are going to have to fail. The real purpose of crypto is re, basically restructuring the entire financial asset. That's the biggest financial number in the world. Global GDP is a hundred trillion roughly. Financial assets, the biggest multiplier, six hundred trillion dollars. That's why I'm bullish on Bitcoin and crypto. But but. Baby bubble in the early stages, just like the dot coms 22 years before them. So I also see crypto, like the dot com revolution, online retailing, not just internet, but online retailing and sales and business. That was a big bubble and a big burst, 2000 and 2002 burst. This is the bubble burst of the crypto bubble. Crypto is simply the biggest bubble of bubbles here, and so it'll crash the most. 3250 will be down 95, 96 percent. For Bitcoin, and then it will lead the boom. So if I had to buy something at the bottom, I wouldn't buy IBM, you know, or 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 the Nasdaq even. I would buy Bitcoin and Ethereum, the leading surviving cryptos out of many baloney companies. Right. Well, quoting Mark Yusko, we've had the pleasure of having him on Kitco News. He does make a very compelling case for exactly what you're saying. But Mark is also very concerned about what we can expect from regulation, especially in the fallout of this FTX collapse,、yeah. and that really sort of clearing the ground for regulators to march in with indignation. Also, a concern of Mark Yusko's and others is this idea of a central bank digital currency (CBDCs) and what that means for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Do you see those coexisting? Does that Derail your thesis here. If regulators come in with more ferocity no, and no, central that, bank digital currencies, but what governments do is they always overborrow, overspend, overprint money. That's the whole point of crypto. If you have a global standard that is not manipulatable, Bitcoin is fixed. That's the secret to it. Okay, that was the genius of that guy Satoshi or whatever that came up with this thing. Something needs to be more fixed. It could be a real standard. If you can print a standard, it's not a standard. If you can manipulate it, that's why the dollar can't be the the currency, especially as we move towards Asia dominance and stuff. That's why I see Bitcoin is the only thing that could be a new effective standard, and it can. And there's not. It would have to be worth a half a million to a million per coin to be there. 
I hear that. The Bitcoin Maxi certainly agree. That is uh, part of the vision of Satoshi Nakamoto to have something that cannot be manipulated like fiat currency is. But because it is such a threat to central banks' ability to create money out of thin air, yeah, so, so, there so, is so concern the, that, that the regulators the, will... The central banks that do nothing but manipulate and cheap and print money out of thin air to grow or something that could be a new emerging technology that's already- So you're not concerned by regulation. I'm betting on Bitcoin winning, not the damn central bank. I want the central banks to fail so bad, they go back to just making enough currency and money available and quit trying to run the economy from the top down as if any of these people who never had sex or run a business know anything about the economy, and they don't. Find me one Federal Reserve chairman that's ever had, ever, ever run a business. I'll, I'll leave out the sex part. <laughs> I can't speak uh, to the sex part for sure there, Harry. Uh, and you do make a case. In fact, many uh, of the politicians that are running our economy have never actually had real world experience, I believe. Uh, I know Stephen Moore's uh, company did a study on that, and it was quite eye opening to see the resumes of the people that were entrusting our economy to there. Uh, I believe it was. They had a lot of training in theory, okay? That's okay. They have, high, they have high education, just not in things. I, I took economics, my first three courses, and I, stopped, I, I was interested in economics from the beginning. I took three courses in economics. I said, this is useless stuff. It's all theory. It's all vague. I started taking real stuff like finance and accounting and marketing and management. Okay, but let's, let's go back to the sex idea, Harry. And I mean that in the sense of population growth and yeah. demographics because- Which drives the economy. Period. Well, there are <laughs> on many fronts. But most of your work, if not all of it, deals with demographics. And you forecast that the U.S. economy will continue to decline, to decline as emerging markets like India, as we've just discussed, have the potential to become economic superpowers, right? So if you're a young American today, between 18 and 34, is it wise to stay in the United States? Should one perhaps look at laying down roots elsewhere? move to another country, another continent? Well, if you don't want to learn to speak Hindi or, or some other foreign language, no, okay. First of all, the United States is still the largest and strongest country in the maturing developed world, okay? And, and one of the things that I expect to happen, again, mostly after I die, is that we're, we, you know, we've gone from living to 60s on average to 80, okay? What happens when we live to be 100? 120. What happens when you can have your first family, then take a vacation, a long 10-year vacation, and go around and party and see the world, and then have a second family? Okay. I mean, so a lot of things could change long term, uh, but in, 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 it's not just our better technologies and living a little longer. The fact that we have lived longer has been a big factor in why more money was made, more progress in the 1900s, the last century, than all of history put together. So this aging thing is an important thing, okay? So, but all developed countries right now are aging too fast and, and, and it aging it by means of not having kids. So we have to have a wide way to find more kids. But the, the, uh, some countries, um, you know, are, are, are doing well because they're, attracting high immigration. Australia. Australia's not having, I mean, uh, more babies than us. They're attracting high income immigrants from growing Asia. So that's a, so you either have to, as a country, you have to keep birth rates up and or you have to attract immigrants from other. But the only way the world grows is if the people in it get more rich, which the emerging countries are, or if you have more babies. So we have to do something to reverse this fact that, oh, just because we got affluent, it means we don't want to have kids because kids are a pain in the ass and they crimp our standard of living, okay? And in fact, people used to have four or five kids just so two to three would survive in the good old days when, when child deaths were much higher. So, so this is a big change in the world, uh, births and stuff and immigration aging. And right now people are fighting over the best immigrants in the world, but at some point countries have to figure a way to incentivize their people or encourage their people to have more kids. You ultimately have to have more kids for the world. Will. 